Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse. Thank you for joining me today in this video. We're going to discuss polio and the rise of polio and what you need to know about it. So I'm going to go over some facts here and some data with you that are probably going to shock you, particularly if you grew up in the generation where polio was sweeping through the United States. The bottom line is the data do not support panic overall, and I want to go over this with you. So first off, the curriculum that I'm going to cover today is actually just a snippet of some of the curriculum that I cover in my classes, Medical Prep 101, 201. This is the fourth day, Nutrition, Herbs, and Old School Disease. So we do cover polio in class. But some of the things that you've heard about polio, for instance, that if everyone has polio, we can expect that there will be massive rates of paralysis and of flaccid limbs. The bottom line is the data do not substantiate this. So according to the NHS of the UK and also the CDC, the consensus is that well over 90% of people will be relatively asymptomatic who experience polio. This is being talked about right now because in the UK, there have been, um, in recent days, there have been increased instances of the water treatment facilities finding that polio, the virus that causes polio, is making its way through the wastewater treatment plants. And why is this? Because polio is a fecal oral disease. It is passed through ingesting poop or contaminated water supplies that have poop of people who are experiencing polio and then people ingest it. But the bottom line is that according to the, U the National Health Service of the UK, 95% of people are completely asymptomatic. Furthermore, there's some interesting stats from our own CDC here in the United States, and I will put a link to where you can find some of this information uh, in the description box below. It's very, very interesting because it kind of flies in the face of what people would like to think about the role of vaccines and all of this. The, the wholesale aggregate of the data in the United States available on polio is in the form called the Pink Book, and I will link that. So the bottom line here is that according to our own CDC's data, 72% of all cases of polio period will be 100% asymptomatic, meaning that someone will have polio, they will have the virus in their body, they will be passing it in their stool, and still they will exhibit no symptoms whatsoever. According to the CDC stats, approximately 24% of all people who experience polio will have minor nonspecific disease consistent with, see if this sounds familiar, fever, sore throat, headache, vomiting, fatigue, and in some cases, meningitis. That is rare, less than 5% of all cases of non-paralytic polio develop into um, aseptic meningitis. But there is a distinct chance that someone who contracts polio will also have other problems, and usually the ones that you have heard horror stories about. The interesting thing is that it depends heavily upon when an individual experiences polio in their lifetime, whether or not they're going to develop the paralytic sequelae, meaning the after effects um, associated with paralysis for people who contract polio. If a child contracts polio, you're looking at one in a thousand as the chance that they're going to develop paralytic polio, which is where we see the limbs that stop to work, the shrunken limbs, etc. And then if an individual is an adult at the time that they contract polio, that risk goes up to 1 in 75. Now, interestingly enough, there are some risk factors associated with developing polio. Obviously, having contaminated water supplies is one of them. But did you know that the place in the body where polio antibodies are specifically manufactured, did you know that that's the tonsils? How many people do you know had their tonsils hacked out by a bunch of doctors who were doing the best medicine of the day and taking out functional organs thinking that they knew better than God instead of telling people to eat diets that were better and less inflammatory, they decided they were going to go and cut on things that didn't need to be cut out. So again, the best medicine of the day has gotten a lot of people weaker and sicker. When we look at the development of polio and its progression, the initial symptoms are are basically similar to non-paralytic polio. Now keep in mind here, a person, 95% of people who actually have polio are going to have nothing at the max more than minor non-specific illness consistent with a cough, cold, upper respiratory disease, runny nose, that sort of thing. You would not know it other than to have their stools looked at or to find that in the wastewater treatment facilities it would show up in their lab tests. The initial symptoms are pretty much the same, but what you start to see is a progressive loss of reflexes, that the limbs tend to lose tonicity, and um, especially in long-term cases, the limbs will become shriveled and contractured. But again, I stress, this is not the most likely outcome. 95% 
of all positive cases of polio will have nothing more than minor nonspecific illness. Now, I've mentioned this and I've beat this into pieces primarily because this is something that governments historically have used to steal people's rights away and to terrify people into giving more of their rights of, away. And that is not what we need in the midst of, of trying to wrest the normalcy back from craziness at the, at the hands of governments who have trodden upon our rights over the past three years with corona. So historically, when we look at polio, we note that this is a case where we basically cured, in quotes, we cured it before we understood fully what causes it. What is it a person has to ask themselves? What is it that causes that 5% of people to go from non-paralytic polio, polio that is basically non-specific symptoms, if any, show up? What is it about that 5% of people that causes the polio to cross into the central nervous system? We really don't have great data on this. The best, in my opinion, the best and most informative lump of data that we have comes from 1938 by Dr. McCormick. Dr. McCormick hypothesized that it was a B vitamin deficiency. To me, with a background in nutrition, I think that it is a very reasonable hypothesis because we know that B vitamin deficits will increase the likelihood of neurological problems, neurological syndromes, circulatory system disruptions. If a person is not eating well, then they're going to be more predisposed to have diseases associated with weaknesses in both the neurological and the circulatory system. So I think it is completely justifiable to increase your overall dietary intake of B vitamins and not in the isolated form per se, but in the whole spectrum of nutrients that you can get from eating a well-rounded and balanced diet. It just takes some planning. So again, to go over the issues here with polio, polio, 95% of people who have it are either asymptomatic or mild nonspecific illness. The vast majority of people who contract polio will never, I repeat, never experience flaccid paralysis. That does not negate the experience of people. And unfortunately, people are conflating a, on my part, um, a lot of times when I bring this information forward, people will conflate the hard facts in front of them with a lack of empathy on my part. And obviously I'm a nurse and I care about people's experiences and I want to help people be healthy. And I recognize that people have family members who experience this, people have family members who died, people have family members who have shriveled and contractured limbs. I obviously have sympathy for this, but Overwhelmingly, this is not something to panic about because we have evidence actually of polio existing. We have Egyptian steels, which are essentially hieroglyphs in, in um, pressed and chiseled formats from 1400 BC that show all of the characteristics of post polio shriveled legs. We are talking about a human experience of dealing with polio for an excess of almost, we're coming up on 3,500 years. So we have existed as a species alongside this. And the reason why I'm bringing this to attention is because I fully anticipate that if, if governments can get people to be scared again and to be terrified of these diseases of old, then they can continue stealing their rights away and continuing to disempower people by feeding them panic. And it is just not justified. It is not justified. If you want to shield yourself, keep your tonsils and your adenoids, have a well-rounded diet, low in inflammatory foods and rich in very nutrient dense foods, particularly I would submit according to Dr. McCormick's uh, from 1938, his research, I would submit to you that a diet specifically targeted in B vitamins uh, and in supporting the B vitamins is going to really pay dividends in this. So I wanted to bring this to our attention here. I wanted to go over some of these issues because it is important and because we need to take a long and broad view historically and also be honest and objective with the data in front of us when it comes to polio. And so again, I will put links in the description box below um, to these resources that you can access yourself the CDC's official um, stats on polio are codified in what's known as the pink book, and I will put a link to that in the description box below. 
So if this is something that you're interested in and you like to be prepared, please consider coming and training with me or taking an online course. You've got two options here. If you want to study more on the nutrition herbs and old school disease, the diseases of old, that is something that I teach in my four day classes. And the next class that I'm teaching is in Kalispell, Montana in a couple weeks, Knoxville, Tennessee, Phoenix, Arizona, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Keller, Texas. The full schedule is at the website, thepatriotnurse.com. If you'd like to train with me in an online format in more broad sense, then the four hour coursework is $129 and that link is down below. I wanted to put this information out there and encourage people really to go over the hard facts, to take away the fear factor and to be honest about the, the problem and the situation in front of us. So I hope that was helpful for you all today. If you did enjoy the video, I hope you'll subscribe to me here on YouTube, Patriot Nurse. You can also support me on Patreon, subscribe to our cryptocurrency and PayPal. I got links below. Please make sure that if you're subscribed that you have the bell button clicked and that you have left a comment recently, like even if it's just a period on every video because YouTube is actively suppressing conservative content, yours truly included. And if you want to get this content out to people, you have to engage, that's the bottom line. So please like and subscribe and share this video and get this important information out, y'all. I hope that you have a very blessed weekend. May the Lord bless and keep you all. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off and I'll see y'all later. Bye.